Hi, Catherine here with Circle Art Designs. Today we will be working on Project 5 from our October Bargain Beadbox series. This is the last project for this series, and then the rest of the beads will go into my own stash. So what are we working on today? Earrings galore. This will be a set of four earrings that we will be making using the beads from that box and a few of my own findings. So let's gather up our supplies and get started. But before we do, let's take a moment and look down at my work table and I am reminded to give thanks to the Lord. Well, my thankfulness for this week and the past two weeks really, is all the lovely, lovely comments and support I have gotten from this community over the loss of my little 16-year-old dog. What a blessing y'all have been to my heart. Thank you so much. Okay, let's get started. So for this one, I'm changing them up a bit and I will be telling you what we're using as we do the earrings. And as always, if you do not have these beads, it's about the design and the joy of creating. So look in your own stash and gather, stop the video and gather up some beads and let's do them together. And these will be up in the shop. Now, when I was putting these together, I have to admit I had Christmas on the brain. So we will be using these six millimeter green adventuring round beads for this set of earrings and actually for three of the four sets because after all it is December so again oh move your hand down Catherine sorry about that let's see if I can get it all together no there it is oh it flashed well these you can see them on the table these are the six millimeter greens and I'm going where is my mat Aren't those lovely adventurines? I love them in this beautiful green color. And we will also be using the faceted 8 miller, 8 millimeter round adventurines as well. Also from my stash, I have pulled two long copper eye pins and some hooks of your choice and a couple of jump rings. So we're going to start with a little three millimeter round spacer ball to um, start the pattern for our first earring. Then we're going with the six millimeter, the eight millimeter, and the six millimeter adventuring. These are all really simple earrings to do, but they are so beautiful and they look so elegant on. They are just perfect for the Christmas season. Now using my round nose pliers, I am starting out with a half a circle. And we are going to make a little coil, a flat coil, going up the bead. Now you can do the end of these eye, um, eye pins on several different ways. I've chosen to make the little, the little curly cue or the coil. It's, and I'm just very slowly twisting this up so that it will make that lovely little stopper that will stop this from going too far up the, um, I'm sorry, it will stop it from moving too much. And if my hands, I'm sorry guys, when I was filming this, I was not in a good place and my hands are going all over. But, um, so again, it is a three millimeter. Come on, Catherine. I hope you get better. A three millimeter, your six millimeter, your eight millimeter, your six millimeter, and your eight. Let me see if I can get a picture to put it right here. Okay, this is a great shot. You can see the three millimeter spacer ball. You can, then you have the adventurine in the six millimeter, then the faceted adventurine in the eight millimeter, 
and another six millimeter adventurine finished off with the spacer ball. Now the reason I did the spacer balls on both sides, it gives a finished classic look to these dangles. And as I was telling you, you do not have to um, do the curl on the end. If you'd rather put this on a head pin and make your loop at the top, that would be just as beautiful. I did not have long head pins in the copper whenever I was doing this. And then another way to finish this off would be to hammer the bottom of your eye pin and that would widen it out enough that it would hold these beads in place and be a lovely finish. So those are just some other ideas. So, as we're curling up the end of this earring, I have to tell you making curls is not my strong point because sometimes they do exactly what I want them to do and sometimes they don't. I am just always thankful when they don't end up in a little knot at the end of them. <laughs> but I think these turned out really lovely. And so I highly recommend you doing the little curls. But as I said, Flattening out the end so that it gives you a wider base would be beautiful. And putting it on a head pin would be lovely as well. So here you go. There are two of them. So next, since these are dangles, and they're just classic dangles, we're going to put them onto our wires, these fish hook wires. And for that, I'm using two sets of pliers. Aren't those just classy looking? I love that look. Uh, my, my daughter came in whenever I was doing these. First of all, she was glad I was beading. <laughs> so, but she says, oh, mom, I would wear those. So these may end up in her stocking instead of in the store. But maybe not. I still have quite a few of these beautiful little six millimeters. Not as many of the faceted eight. So, I am turning, oop, no I'm not, I'm sorry, I did not turn these fish hooks. And that's because the fish hooks in the copper were real bit brittle and every time I tried to turn it, I popped the end of it. So, I'm opening up a little three millimeter, it's a three, four millimeter jump ring and I'm adding my dangle and my hook and then holding it between two pliers, I just twist it. Now, I know a lot of you have heard this before, but please don't ever pull your jump rings apart that misshapes them. And even if you get them into the correct shape, metal like clay, if you've ever worked with clay, have memory, has memory. And it ends up remembering how you pulled it. And when you least expect it, it will help itself to be pulled apart again and you'll drop that. Now, did you see what I was showing you? Get your hands back down, Catherine. Is for this earring to work, well, this one doesn't really matter unless you want to make sure your curl is facing front, but you want the eye of your eye pin and the eye of the fish hook to be in the same plane. So if you have a front facing and a front facing, the one in the middle will be a side facing. I hope that makes sense. That way they hang where you can see the part of the earring you want to see or have people see when they look at you head on. And again, we are just twisting. You twist it to open and you twist it to close when you're working with these jump rings. All right. And yes, these are the little three millimeters. And I really find that my curved nose pliers work best trying to catch those um, little bitty jump rings, but I love the look of them. 
Because for me, and this is my own personal preference, whenever you look at an earring, especially handmade earrings, you want the part that you have designed to be the dominant piece that you're looking at. And if you get your jump rings too big, what becomes the dominant piece is the jump ring. Now, sometimes in a design, you want that. And I have done some chain mail earrings that I wanted that jump ring to be the most important part, but not on these. All right, on to our next pair. And again, this one will be using mostly findings, and I have to tell you, these little teardrop closed frames that you see right now on my mat as I'm separating everything out are um, from Amazon. And you can Google teardrop frames for jewelry making. And you will get this. And it comes in three sizes, but I decided not to use the smallest of the sizes because it was it was too small for my six millimeter, and that's these right here. The six millimeter go with to even go into the small, the smallest of them. I'm also using some 24 gauge. I uh, head pins to put on these little balls and we will be using the fish hook wires again and again some of the little three millimeter jump rings so putting this all out isn't that pretty oh and I forgot I also pulled some of the faceted adventurine in the eight millimeter I will be using the eight millimeter for the bottom and the six millimeter for the top of these teardrop closed frames. And that's the thing, these are closed frames, so you will not be opening them. All right, so I love those little head pins. That's what I'm showing you there. Aren't those cute? So we're putting on our faceted Adventurine in the eight millimeter, and this is a twist. And you'll notice each time I hold that, I am touching it with my finger to make sure there's nothing sticking up. Because when you are doing a twist, if it's sticking up, when you get to the bottom, it's still going to be sticking up. And even after you cut it, it's still going to be sticking up. And you don't want anything to scratch your neck or catch in your hair or your clothes. And that's what it should look like. You make tiny little twists or turns until you get it all the way down to the bottom of the bead. So let's do this again. On goes the faceted adventuring in the eight millimeter. We're gonna hold it with our straight nose pliers, make sure nothing is sticking out. And we're gonna start these teeny tiny little twists. And I try not to lose my grip at all when I'm doing this, because I want all my circles to be the same. And the other thing about this is when you're making these circles, make sure they don't lap over each other, but just like making a coil, they continue to move up and there we have a beautiful little eight millimeter on its it's a head pin now we're doing the same thing for the six millimeter smooth it venturine aren't those lovely and again we made sure nothing was sticking out we're twisting and we're making sure that it's not lapping over each other it makes a beautiful beautiful little turn and the last one, we're gonna do it the same way. Now you might be thinking, well, why aren't you wrapping these? Well, this is 24 gauge, and it is a gold-plated, 18 karat gold-plated, 24 gauge. And since, did you see how I got that twisted? I had to move it back over so that it made a coil. Make sure you're paying attention to that. Okay, what I was saying. These do not wrap well and for me at least, in the 24 gauge. And I do not want this to pull out. So when I make these little downward loops, 
and you have several coils on it, it makes it almost impossible for them to unwind themselves and fall off. <laughs> so that's why I always do these when I'm using these teeny tiny little head pins. All right, so the next step. For this next step in that, we are going to use the little three millimeter jump rings. My brain just lost what I was going to say. The three millimeter jump rings. So what I'm doing is I am making sure the slit was on the top. I Did you notice I twisted the wrist to open this? I'm going to put the, the frame on first and then I'm going to put the faceted eight millimeter bead. Now why does it matter? When you're making these, if you put one set with the frame on top and one set with the frame on bottom, you're going to have an issue. Now, I opened it up and let me see if I can get a picture right here. Okay, looking at this picture, which was the best I could get. If you put your pieces on your jump ring in the wrong order, especially when you're doing closed frames. They will twist and they will not lay right. You will have a bead in the wrong direction on one of them and a bead in the other direction on the other. So for this piece, you want to put on your larger frame, whether it's a teardrop, a circle, a square, whatever you have in your own stash. Make sure you put your larger frame on your jump ring first and then your bead and then your smaller frame on your jump ring. The order really is important. Take it from me, a lot of trial and error and wondering why do these earrings not lay correctly? Well, it really does depend on the order you put them in. So do it every time. If you do large, bead, small, your bead will lay to the front of your earring. If you do bead, frame, frame, your bead will lay to the back. And this one, one of them, when I was testing it out, I did and I put the frame bead frame on one of them and the other one I put frame frame bead on the other one and I had to take that sucker apart so be aware of the order you are putting your earring together in it does make a difference So I'm going to close up my jump ring the same way we've been doing with two pliers and twisting, not pulling. And then I'll lay this out and we will take a look at it. So this shows the layout. I have the small frame on the jump ring and then I have the bead and the large frame on the jump ring bead. I'm sorry, on the jump ring. And you can see that this bead is laying to the front. And that's why I'm such a stickler to say do it the same way every time. And then you will like the results. So, now it's time to put on our hook. Here I'm taking my pliers and I'm twisting the loop at the bottom to the front so my earring will be dangling face front as opposed to side. That's the way I like to make my earrings. I'm about to open up this jump ring. It's the same thing between two pliers and twist to the wrist. Never pull. And now I'm putting on my dangle and then I will put on my bead because there is a six millimeter that goes in the top of that frame. And last I will put on my hook. Why did I do that? I did that so that both of my beads will be in the same plane. So the ear wire has taken the place 
of the second frame. Dangle, bead, and ear wire. That way they'll all hang in the same plane. And now we're going to do the next one. And we will take it off camera and get that done. And there they are. Now, aren't, aren't they lovely? I just think these are gorgeous. And they're so simple to make and so classy. On to our next pair. Now, with next pair, I have pulled silver. So we've had a copper, a gold, and a silver. And these beads look beautiful regardless of which ones you choose to do. This one, I've moved the camera out just a little bit more. So our six millimeters kind of look smaller than they have been. But I can assure you these are the same six, six millimeter adventurine that we have been using. Added to that, I'm going to use some of my own uh, five millimeter crystals. And I chose the clear with these. I'm... I thought about doing red, but then I thought that would limit whenever you could wear these earrings. And we're using the silver hooks. And off to the corner, you will see some chandeliers. These chandeliers I picked up in a set off of Amazon. Amazon has a lot of these real pretty chandeliers um, that you can buy at several different price points. You just have to kind of do a little search for them, but I thought these were just lovely. I Again, I am going to use the three slash four millimeter jump rings, and I am using some 24 gauge head pins. And while we're separating all these, I have two different size head pins for this, just because I didn't have enough of one and too much of the other. And so, would you please like this video and leave a comment? And if you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. It really helps my channel. All right, so I'm laying this out here in the way I am going to put it on. It's going to be a six millimeter round, the uh, bicone crystal, and the six millimeter round, bicone crystal, and a six millimeter round. So I have put on one of the six millimeter rounds. I'm testing to make sure that nothing is coming up above my uh, straight nose pliers. And then I'm just doing the little twist in the wrist to move it all the way down to the bead that we used in our first. I believe it was the first. I've done several of these now, but I go into a lot more detail earlier in this video. So again, oh, did you see that? It slipped off. And boy, when it slips off like that, it's really hard to catch it back. But it's working. Just make sure that your the tip is in between the straight nose pliers because you do not want anything hanging on this to catch in your hair, on your neck, in your clothes. I tested to make sure that it was the wire was down there. And again, it's just simple twists. And remember, you want these to coil. We don't want them to build on top of each other. We want them to coil up your straight nose pliers. Now, the chandeliers that I have picked have five spaces for beads and so I'm going through and I'm putting all of these on their 24 gauge silver head pin and getting them ready to put in this is the hardest part or the most time consuming part of these earrings because there's so many of them to do but it's not hard as long as you remember to make it coil up your wire as opposed to coiling on top of each other. And if you like that, I mean, if you if you like it to coil up on top of each other, it's a cute, messy little look and, and that everything has a place in a design depending on what you like to do. But I like the... 
the coiling up I I just like the finished look of that better and so for me that's what I do whenever I'm designing now then I'm going to use straight nose both of my straight nose pliers and even though I said that I picked up my not straight nose my uh, chain nose pliers I picked up my straight nose pliers but I'm using the chain nose for the next step and through the miracle of the video all of these beads have been wrapped isn't that a blessing don't you wish you could do that in real life now i'm going to tell my age but when I, that happens i always think of bewitched and how she just wiggled her little nose and and it happened but here i just turn off the video and then it happens <laughs> all right so what i'm showing you here is i have turned this chandelier with the back side up when I'm putting on the jump ring and the bead. I open the jump re ring, I put on the bead, and then I put on the chandelier back side up. The reason I do that is because that way when you turn it face forward, you're opening for your jump ring is on the back of your earring and it gives it a more finished look on the front so again i have opened up that jump ring i'm going to put my bead on first and then i'm going to put the chandelier on back side up the jump ring and then i'm going to close my jump ring And as we're getting all of these on this little chandelier, and it's just a repetition, make sure you lay your beads out the direction you want them or you know well how you want these to go on. This one again is going Adventurine, Bicone Crystal, Adventurine, Bicone Crystal, Adventurine. So there'll be three Adventurines and two Bicone Crystals on each of the earrings. But as we're getting this done, you might be hearing a click, 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 click in the background. Well, where I have to record this, we have a large bay window. And when I started editing this video, the sun had not reached the bay window. For many years, I have collected these little toys. I don't know what you call them, bobbleheads or... I don't know, they have the little, the they have movement when the sun hits them. I have them because they remind me of the clicking of the old wall clocks or mantle clocks, the grandfather clocks, where they go click, 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 click. And I find that very comforting. And so I have no other place to put them. There's a whole ton of them. I would have to take them off that window ledge every time I needed to record. That's one of the reasons that I put music over my videos in the beginning because it kind of blended out the click, click, click of my toys. But people said, you know, it would be very nice if you wouldn't put music on so that we could hear you better. And I thought, what a wonderful thing to say because, you know, I think, Mm, who wants to listen to me talk? <laughs> but, so I've quit using music except at the very end. And with no music comes the clicking of my little toys. All right, going back to what we were doing, I have just about got this last bead on. Let me, and I will lay it down and show you what it looks like. Or maybe I'll hold it in my hand. Yeah. Let's do that. After I got this done, I thought, you know, I should have done some ink painting on this piece. And I may do some more later in the year with, because I've got a whole bunch of these chandeliers, and do some ink painting on them. That would be lovely. And through the magic again of video, we now have two pieces. Isn't that pretty? I just love the way 
the matte of the adventurine and the shine of the crystal bicones just really go together. And I think it gives it a real, real, I know I use it, but I think it gives it a real classy look. Now, again, I am turning the bottom of my ear wire so that it will face forward because like I said, I like my dangles to face forward. And once I've done that, I'm gonna go ahead and do both of them. Then we're gonna put them on using a jump ring. Now I use jump rings for two reasons. And I have said this before. One of the reasons is more times than not, when I open, no matter how careful I try to just twist the wire for the ear wire, I break off the little end. The other reason is when you use a jump ring on this type of dangle, it gives it more space going down your earlobe to clear and to have more swing on it. And I really like that. If I'm going to wear dangles, I want them to swing. When I was a young girl, first of all, I've always worn clips. I tried for a while to wear the others, but I had an allergic reaction to it, and it was really bad. But whenever I was in a young girl, when I was a young girl in about fifth or sixth grade, I got a pair of dangles, and they had a wonderful swing on them. And whenever you twist through your head back and forth, the little pieces would bang up to each other and it would go jingle, 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 jingle. Well, I didn't get to wear them very long because one day my teacher told me, aren't those lovely? That's not what she said. Aren't those lovely? We've got that finished. Well, one day she said to me, would you please come to the front? And I did. And she said, I want you to take those earrings off and I need you to put them in your purse and not wear them back to school. And I said, well, why? Everybody else gets to wear earrings. She said, because you keep shaking your head all the time just to hear the bells ring. So that was the end of those earrings. But and here I'm putting it on. Um, I'm putting something behind it. So maybe you can see the crystals better as opposed to white on white. But did you see them catch the flash? They're just lovely. And look at the intricate work on those on those chandeliers. Wouldn't that be pretty painted? I am going to try that. And now on to our next and last set of earrings for this video. So this is the picture of the things we will need to make this last pair of earrings. You notice there is no green adventurine in this, but I love it. It's going to be mixed metals. I'm going to use gold and rose gold to make these earrings. Number one in the picture are the main bindings for this earring. This is a piece of memory wire bracelet memory wire. What I did was I measured an inch and a fourth to an inch and a half. You can go with either one. I should have made it a little more than an inch and a half because I ended up having to leave something off. But And I cut it with my memory wire cutters. The reason I did not show you this is because I use these memory wire cutters on stainless steel. The memory wire says it's stainless steel. The chain that I had said it was stainless steel. When I tried to cut the chain with my memory wire cutters, it, sp it sprung it and they don't go back together properly and will not cut properly. So when I finally got two little pieces done, I went, that's it, I'm through, I'm not doing anymore. And I ordered me another pair. But I have shown how to cut pieces of memory wire before and um, so it's not a hard process. You just have to measure with your ruler how long you want it and make sure you cut the first one, lay it on top of the memory wire, cut the second one, and then you just twist the ends. And I will show you how to do that later on in the video. So after you've got your two pieces of memory wire cut, 
Then number two for this are these lovely rose gold leaves. I think they are so pretty and they came from the Bargain Bead Box this month. The next piece, in fact, everything except my findings for this earring came from Bargain Bead Box. We used these in a necklace that I made in a previous project for this series, but they are your um, brass leaf charms, and they are just beautiful. Number three on this are those beautiful bicones. You'll find them about in the middle of this picture. They're in a four millimeter, they're crystal faceted bicones and Magma AB. And I have used these a lot and still have just a few of them left. I can think of many projects I would like to add these to. And although you can't see it well, number four is a fish hooks earring wires from my own stash. And number five are these really lovely little hematite, or it says imitation hematite or synthetic hematite in the rose gold, and they call it rose gold nuggets. These are seven millimeter. I think they look like little Tic Tacs, don't you? <laughs> I think I've said that before. Okay, number six. Number six is the beautiful, beautiful cornelian. And I love it in this matte finish. It is just beautiful. These are 10 millimeter, and we will need one for each earring. Number seven is the pressed leaves. These are leaf beads in kind of a, a matching gold for the carnelian. I did not use these. And this is why I said if I had had a pair of wire cutters that were working properly for memory wire, I would have made it a little longer so that I could add these to them. And it would be very lovely to add this to them. Number eight, although you can't tell, Number eight is your size three, four millimeter gold jump rings. I will be adding that using that one, but I will also be using the number nine, which is a the next size up jump ring in my set that I got off of Amazon. So that because I need a larger jump ring to go into the rose gold leaves number two and that's what we're going to need for this earring set So I'm going to take a little piece that I had left over to show you how I turned this. These are my bell making pliers. I'm using it on the smallest setting. I'm going to grab hold of it and I'm going to start bending this piece around the bell. Now I had trouble holding on to this piece and that was because of the memory wire cutter itself it had made little indents in it that wanted to break off. And whenever I saw that, I just went, yeah, we're going to, if I can make sure you how to do this, then that's going to be it for this part till I get my new ones in. Okay, so if you see, I am careful, just like rolling those other uh, beads from the other earrings, only this you're rolling the memory wire, go down, Catherine, around your bell pliers. It's, it makes a bell or, or a circle. And so that's what I did and that's how I made the endings of these. Now to start these I'm going to start with that hematite, the, the little rose gold nuggets. And then I'm going to put on one of the bicones in the Magma AB. 
Then the carnelian, the 10 millimeter carnelian, a bicone, and a rose gold nugget. And that is going to be the pattern for this earring. So I tried it a couple of ways to see which one I liked. And to be real honest, I this is the one I really like. And if you notice, there is just flat, not enough wire for me to get that leaf on there. So after that, I turned the top of my memory wire and made a loop on the top, just like I showed you the loop on the bottom. But what I did was I had to make it slightly smaller because of the length of what I had to use. So the one on the end will be a slightly larger loop than the one on the top. Yours should be the same if you're not fighting with sprung memory wire cutters. So again, for this, it's your rose gold nugget, your bicone, your 10 millimeter carnelian, your bicone, and your rose gold nugget. See how little I have to work with that? I am having to use, and again, we have that end that it has to come off before I can catch it. And I have to use my regular straight nose pliers to get a small enough loop that I can use this. I would suggest, if I had not had <laughs> to get these finished so I could put this out for you, I would have just waited till my other cutters came in and I would cut a slightly bigger piece because even though I thought I had a big enough piece, whenever I started trying to turn it where it had mangled it on the end, it just flat did not want to work. So here we go again. We're going to turn that loop, and that loop is going to get turned one way or the other. So I'm just using my straight nose and making a smaller loop. I really want the dangles to be the same length. And this, the smaller loop, will be real close to the top, and it's, it's not going to show the part that that really matters are those loops on the bottom. Sometimes you have to work with what you have, and that is what I am doing here. <laughs> okay, so we're going to get that closed. We're going to make sure they're in the same plane. And remember, we talked about that on one of the other earrings. You want both up for this particular one, you want both of your loops to be facing the same direction. And now I'm trying to decide, so I didn't get to use these press glass. Do I want to put them here and then put on the, the charms, the leaf charms in the rose gold? Or do I want to put on just the charms? And I decided to go ahead and go with the double leaf. I just really like it. And for this, I'm going to use my, um, I'm sorry, my loopers. I got busy looking at myself and went, now what did I use? <laughs> okay, so to use the loopers, you just put it in, you mash the handles together, you make a question mark so that the loop goes right over the top of the bead, and then you close it. Now for this loop, I'm going to tell you something different. My loop on the top is going to, I'm sorry, I'm not going to tell, my loop on the top and my loop on the bottom need to be in the same plane. Now it doesn't really matter so much for this press bead because it's going to spin. But it matters when you're hanging your rose gold leaf charm at the bottom so that they're both facing the same direction. Here I'm making sure that my eye pin is closed on the bottom and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm going to put on my press glass, I'm gonna put it into my looper, and then I'm putting it across the looper into the little hole, mashing 
and then bringing it out and making sure I close it completely with my straight nose pliers just like that. Now I'm going to make sure they're in the same plane so that they'll both be going the same and look at that it said no no I've twisted a little bit come down Catherine so what I'm doing is I'm twisting it so they're in the same plane <coughs> oh excuse me and then we can go ahead and add the charms now if you notice I'm using the larger those five millimeter jump rings that will become part of the design because when you use something that much bigger it is going to stand out as part of the design as opposed to smaller and letting it go in. So I have put on my charm, I've put on my leaf, and then I am putting on my component on that memory wire finding. And it will have a nice little curve to it. And I really like the curve. So what I'm saying, oh, I didn't get it. Something is not right. And you know what it was? I had not paid attention to the direction my dangle was going and my leaf and what I wanted to do. So we're gonna try it one more time. We're gonna put on the leaf this time. We're going to put on the charm. We're going to close those up and we're going to put it down and make sure that the circle at the top is going the same direction as the circle on your component. Once that's done, I can take the smaller three millimeter and add the component and the dangle together. Because remember what I said, if your, what you're joining to needs to be in the same plane, and then you can put it together with a jump ring that is going the opposite direction. And that's what I did here so that they will lay flat. Next, I'm going to take another three millimeter. I'm going to put it on and I'm going to put on my fish hook um, ear wire. Sorry, my hand is in the way. Okay, let's try this again. My fish hook ear wire. And close it up with a twist. I think this is just a lovely, lovely little piece. It It's different because the others we've done have a very classic look to them. But this is a very bohemian style look and I really love it. It would be nice if I could just hang on to it because I keep slipping out. And let's try this again. Close that up. This is, I don't want to. Close that up. Now on this particular one, what I'm having to do because the jump ring was slightly under when they made the jump ring, instead of it touching, one had slid under the other and I am having to correct that issue. And here, I did not check my loop well enough and that is why that bottom dangle came out. So now I'm going to have to put it back on to my component. My jump ring was not the issue. It was the loop on the little press glass leaf that I did not make sure was closed well enough. I can tell you by this time I was getting pretty tired. I can tell when I get tired when I'm working on these things and I go, why did I do that? Didn't I see that? And now we're going to do the same thing with the other earring. And again, through the magic of video, here are the finished pieces. 
Aren't they lovely the way they hang? I just love the curve. I think that will curve and, and frame the face really well. These are the chandeliers and I think they are beautiful. Of course, I always like what I do. I hope you like what I do too. Um, as I said, I will be putting these up in a shop. I'm kind of under crunch right now because I want to get this video out today on Wednesday. So I will be working on getting these in the shop in the morning. And there are all the earrings that we have done today. I will put pictures up at the back. Thank you so very much for joining me on this beading adventure today. This next week, we will be starting the November, which will have some colors for making some things for December. And maybe not, because you know, I'm always a month behind by the time I get my subscription. Again, thank you for joining me. I loved doing this piece. I love making earrings. I don't wear them very often, but I love making them. And I hope you love making them too. And if not, I hope you love watching them being made. And once you know how they are made, visit our shop at circleartdesigns.square.site and pay us a visit. Blessings, y'all. I'll see you on Friday. Catherine, Circle Art Designs, dot square, dot site.